Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to design a ceramic chip, a custom, a fully custom ceramic chip. And I want to bring you along for the ride. So what you're looking at here, this is Adobe Illustrator, just the Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud. I you know, obviously edit photos all day, so I have Photoshop and Illustrator and all of that. Now I pulled this logo off of, let me see if I can phrase this the appropriate way. I use this logo on lots of things, like my golf balls, and my website. And so I just took this portion of it and I imported that into a new file here at 300 DPI in Illustrator. And I needed more space so I could add this down here at the bottom, this rolling edge design where I'm gonna put my edge spots. So this is obviously Illustrator, for those of you not familiar, is obviously a vector graphics software program. So you can resize things like text and you're not losing quality by resizing things. You can shrink it down and expand it and it's gonna use the same font and just, it's, it's vector based. So this is kind of where I started. I want this to be a very commercial design. I want to advertise my YouTube channels, The Vintage Golfer, Hobby Fillet, uh, questionable whether I wanted my website or not. It, in this case, it didn't really work out. If you look back in my old blue chip design that was built, that were made in the Paulson factory. I used a different design, but that was just the inlay I was designing, not the actual full custom chip. So I decided to go with this kind of idea more. And I reached out since I had no, I have, I have no experience designing ceramic chips. I reached out to Gene from ABC Gifts and Awards on pokerchipforum.com. I just messaged him and he had some good tips. The first was that Remember that white is unprinted, so it's just the blank shining through. So I need to make that big and bold enough. If I'm going to have white lines or white text, that it will actually shine through the other printing. Kind of an emphasis on white. And the other thing is in the color mode. So if we look over here under file, you can see right now it's set to RGB red, <laughs> red, green, blue. But if you switch it to any set, it's a more realistic representation of what you're going to get printed because it's not backlit. If you switch to CMYK, what is CMYK? Cyan, magenta, and yellow or something? I don't know. Anyway, if you switch it over, you can see there's clearly a color difference. I'm just going to undo that so you can see the color difference here. So this is kind of the premise. I like the H in the middle as it's hobby philic and hobby and john hobby and it's a good h is something that you know i i like i like that look the vintage guy so i want that text there too so moving forward a few steps i don't want to go through every single step i ended up with this design so you can see the text i moved from the surround down here to the rolling edge the vintage golfer hobby philic and i'm going to kind of use those as edge spots now the H remained. Now, at, in this step, one of the things I tried was I tried putting numbers. So I grayed out the H. I made it huge, just really light gray. And then I put a red 25 or a red 20. I tried 20 and 25. I decided to go with 25. And then I tried a green 25. I just wanted to see how it looked. It didn't look right to my eye. So I kind of kept the green H and I felt like I wanted something else here. So I put the 2021 down here. But you'll notice the white, you know, numbers, denominations, kind of like certain Bud Jones chips. And then I have these white accent lines. And I like this orange transition ring I have around this inlay. Now, the, the inlay portion of it, I should say, is obviously a ceramic chip. Now, I wanted more depth, so I added this, what I call a guilloche pattern. For those of you familiar with watches, they use these specialized etching tools where they have this repetitive pattern, like this moving repetitive pattern, and they, they call it a guilloche, okay? So they have these guilloche watch patterns. Obviously on a watch, it's multifaceted. So it doesn't just make a line, like a printed line, it actually creates facets so the light reflects off of it differently. And they're very stunning when you get like a really well-executed guilloche pattern on a watch. So kind of mimicking that here, I just made an ellipse and I just, Rotate it 360 degrees. Uh, you can do that here through the effect uh, path or distort and transform. And then I think it's the transform function. Either way, I just repeated it 360 degrees. So it 
looks it kind of mimics a guilloche pattern. That adds some depth and texture to the surround, but I wanted the center here, the logo, to be flat. I wanted it to look just as flat as possible, so I wanted just solid white with this transition ring around the outside. You can see it's kind of a double transition ring because there's an, the orange, which is the same as the edge rolling edge color, edge spots, and then there's kind of this black line around it as well. And then there's the H with this line and the number. So from here, I kind of refined it based on, I went back and I read Gene's message and he mentioned you can outline the white and make it make the white portions bold. So I did that. I emboldened the white right here with some edge spots. Uh, I didn't like the look of it when I just made these little boxes. I wanted it to look like it's pointing toward, calling attention to the center logo here. So I left that pretty, open on the sides here. We'll see how that works out. And I feel like this, it doesn't, it's, there's something missing here. I can't figure out, I can't, maybe it needs to be in cursive. Maybe, I don't know. I, I tried the Georgia font, see how, oh, and I also changed the year. So if you look down here, initially it's a 2021 and I changed it to say Hobby Philic. And so I tried this font down here, it didn't work. So I ended up using this impact font. I, you know, I'm just not hundred percent sure uh, what, so you can see up here, it says impact, regular font, six point. I, I played with this a little. I'm having trouble figuring out exactly how I'm going to do that. And I'm also not sure about the spacing. I should talk about that here too. So just from my experience making YouTube videos, I know that a chip is 39 millimeters. And so when I made this circle, the base layer here, I just made it 39 millimeters. And so up here, whatever it is, I, can't, I don't know where it is, but whatever that comes out to, 1.49 inches, whatever, I, I don't know. So I just typed in some numbers and it came up and I happened to know that your average poker chip is about 3.3 millimeters thick. So when I created this rectangle, I just did some simple, you know, circumference is like the diameter times pi, or what is it, 2r pi equals the circumference. And then I just entered that in as the number in millimeters and it converts it to inches because that's what I have it set to. And then same thing with this 3.3 millimeters tall. And that's what the size of this rectangle is. Now I know from experience that this is the wrong size because it's like 3.32 millimeters tall poker chips are. And they're in, you look at ceramic chips and there's a slight overhang on the rolling edge. So I know that they're probably going to tell me to make these bigger. Same with like the chip surface itself. I know that they're not exactly 39 millimeters. It's like 39.3 millimeters. So likely I'm gonna to have to expand these. Maybe they'll do it. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm planning on going through ABC gifts and awards, which my understanding is under the same ownership as BR Pro Poker. I'll probably contact BR Pro Poker because their website seems a little bit more modern, even though it's the same company. I, I don't know. That, that's my plan. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm excited. So based off of this, I was pretty happy. And so the denominations I wanted were 25, 100. So you can see I made a 100 here. I wanted a kind of a progression here. So I obviously added this radial gradient to the surround here. And you can see obviously the accent color, Hobby Felix, the same, everything very similar here. I like it how the black 100 blends in the outline of the 100 blends in with the surround. Anyway, I like this chip. Then moving on to the 500, you can see very similar. I, I, I moved the accent color, so you can see the progression here from the accent color of these little lines from white to white, and then all of a sudden now they're the accent color of purple, which is the same here, the guilloche over, yeah, yeah. And so pretty happy with this as it looks. You remember I want the hobby philic center logo here to be the emphasis as it's kind of a commercial, as it's for my YouTube channel. And then I moved to the 2000 chip. Now, <laughs> it's it's funny, it, it still cracks me up, the 500 to 1000. It's like the tradition of the 500 to 1000. It seems like it, this does what I want it to do and it fills the need, like instead of getting a 1000 chip and a 5000 chip, I can just get some 2000 chips and just leave it at that. Even if that's breaking from tradition, I'm fine with that. But either way, I like this pink. It makes me happy. It's pink. So if you look down here, well, real quick. So with the 25, 100, 500, and 
2000. So if you look down here, you'll notice that there is a gradient pattern here on the rolling edge as well. I wanted to differentiate it a little bit more. And you'll notice that the gradient pattern is not perfectly centered because there is a top and a bottom because there's actually text on these. And so I slightly offset this towards the top. So it's slightly top biased, but it's pretty close. So you can see, you know, a little rolling edge gradient there along with, you know, the same gradient along the rest of it. So we get a little bit of progression. Hopefully it's pretty subtle and hopefully it'll be, it'll work for me. So I'm going to order four chips for the set, probably a set of 500, the 25, 100, 500, and 2000s. Well, you're going to see these in games on the channel. That's why I'm getting these made. And I might make some more in a few years. We'll see how everything works out. And then obviously I wanted a promotional chip. Now these promotional chips aren't just promotional. Yes, I give them out. Uh, but my patrons are going to be first in line when these come. If you're a patron, you're likely going to get a promotional chip at some point in the future. Maybe not this month or the next month, but soon. We're gonna, <laughs> I'm working on that. And then we'll, we'll see how they look. And then the other thing I like to do with these is I like to use these on the golf course because these promotional chips work great as ball markers, golf ball markers. You can hand them out on the golf course. It's just, they're very convenient to have and they they work wonders. So this is, you know, very bold. Repet re there's some redundancy built into here. Hobby Philic, the vintage golfer, the vintage golfer, Hobby Philic, you can see all over the place. Yay, go me. And I also wanted the year on here as well. To me, as a collector, you if you guys, you know, I have a Hobby John channel where I talk about collecting. And I like scarcity. By putting the year on here, if I'm just going to order 100 or 200 of these this year, I know exactly how many I ordered. I know that they're from this year. And in subsequent years or in the future, I'm going to put the current year on here. So uh, it they will hopefully retain some value to patrons or whoever I may run into. When they see those, they'll be like, oh, this is a 2021. And I might change the design subtly here or there as well for future models of my promotional chip. So that's how I think. I don't want I don't want just like one printed, you know, millions of them throughout the course of my life. I want there to be some distinguishing feature that sets each one apart and I decided to go with the year. So that's how the year when if you look at my original design, how I put the year down here. I had the same thinking about my sets, but I was like, eh, I think I'd rather just have hobby philic here. Yeah, it's a little redundant, but I think that's good, you know, like you look at uh, car, they put their branding all over the car. Do you need it on the left side? Do you need it on the right side? You need it in the aft portion? You need it in the front? You need it on the seat? You need it in the passenger seat? You need it on the steering wheel? You need it on the glove? You, needless to say, I'm okay with branding. You look at shoes too. It's like you're going to put the logo on the sole and on the left and on the right and on the back and on the tongue. And not, you know, it's like, so, you know, when <laughs> just family members, it's, it's redundant. You don't need how you feel like here and here. You don't even need the H. It's like, well, it's my it's my design, so I'm gonna stick with it. I, if you have, if it drives you nuts, please rage in the comments below. It cracks me up. So, to me, that's that's just what I'm gonna do. Uh, how do you feel? Okay, yeah. So here, obviously, you know the year. So that's the set. My next step is to contact. I guess I'm not. I'm probably not gonna contact Gene with these. I'm probably gonna send them in, submit them through BR Pro Poker, which means I need to make a purchase, and so I'm debating denominations. And we're going to talk about that in part two, as I put my order in and we'll see how it works out. I'm excited. This is my first custom set. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You can read, you can hate it. I, I would love it if you hate it because everybody's different. You know, if everybody agrees, I feel like something's wrong if everybody's like, yeah, that that's great. I'm like, no, it isn't. Stop it. It's just very average. It's, promotional for my channel so it's not like any sort of personal great design that really captures my personality but it is what it is so i like hearing people's thoughts and com reading i guess technically people's thoughts and comments as usual huge thanks to my patrons for your support if you want to be a patron you can go to patreon and you can visit the link in the description below anything helps a dollar a month greatly appreciated it's just general support I try to post some behind the scenes things here and there whenever I can. Pictures, videos. You guys know the routine from here. Subscribe, thumbs up the video if you liked it, or thumbs down if you hated it. 
Let me know your experience with ceramic chips, and I will see you in the next one.